Hello and welcome to the weekly roundup video uh, with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday, the 19th of March 2019, uh, and, and the time has just gone 11:50 GMT. Uh, this week, uh, we've seen a fairly decent start to the European equity session. Um, many of the major European equity markets are continuing on the push, the, the rally that we've seen in recent weeks, and many European markets have reached five month highs today. Uh, we saw a multi month high being reached in the Hang Seng overnight. Uh, as I said, many of the major markets hit levels not seen. Many of the major European markets have, have, have reached levels not seen since October last year, uh, and it would appear that the US equity markets are also going to be uh, opening at multi month highs. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot in terms of actual news flow. Um, it's been a continuation of the positive sentiment that we've seen in global equity markets uh, in, in recent weeks. Uh, one of the, one of the um, things that traders are looking out for is the, the Federal Reserve's two-day meeting begins today uh, with the announcement tomorrow. Now, the Federal Reserve um, are expected to keep the monetary policy unchanged. Uh, and on top of that, some traders are expecting that the commentary will get to, from the Federal Reserve will be optimistic, but a bit on the, the neutral side. Uh, in recent weeks and months, uh, the U.S. Central Bank have kind of rolled back on their previous hawkish commentary and have kind of moved towards a more of a middle of the road position. Uh, and, tra and traders, some, some some traders are expecting that line to be um, that line to be continued, uh, whereby the Federal Reserve is on one hand. Uh, optimistic and hopeful for the US economy and talking about the positive aspects of it, but maybe potentially as well discussing uh, some of the softer economic indicators uh, and then also possibly using uh, more kind of wait and see language as opposed to actually hawkish language, which, which would suggest we, we're going to see more rate hikes in 2019. We're going to see rate hikes in 2019. Uh, we did have some positive economic news from the UK today. Unemployment dropped to 3.9 percent, and I've not seen since the 1970s. Uh, whereas economists are expected to remain uh, to remain unchanged at 4 uh, percent. We did see the wages numbers were decent um, month on month. Average UK wages on a weekly basis, excluding bonuses, uh, remained at 3.4 percent. Meeting forecast: so British workers are getting a decent uh, real increase in wages. Uh, where, whereby what that means is the uh, rate at which wages are increasing is, is comfortably outstripping the inflation rate. So they're getting a real increase. They're getting a real, um, as economists would say, they're getting a real increase in pay. So that's added to the optimistic sentiment. Uh, and the German ZEW economic sentiment update uh, remained in contraction territory, uh, remained, came in at negative 3.1. Uh, that's 12 consecutive months in a row. It, uh, it, remained, it was in negative ter territory. But it was an improvement uh, on a month-to-month -month basis, and it's certainly better than the negative 11 reading that economists were predicting. Uh, take a look now uh, at some of the major European markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. <clears throat> to be honest, it's a better similar story. Uh, the major European equity markets uh, have reached levels not seen since October. Um, so we can see here it's a continuation of the nice bounce back we've seen since late December. As I said, the FTSE 200 uh, has hit a level not seen since early October. We're comfortably above uh, the 200-day moving average, which the market closed above yesterday. Uh, if the market does continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 7,400 region. Uh, it's a big psychological number. And we did, see, we did see some consolidation in around that area back in September and October last year. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the late September high, of up towards 7,558. If we do manage to uh, pull back and retrace some of the, the most recent upward move, support might be found from this red line here, the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 7,244. You notice how not too far away from that level, um, that, that, that level coincides with the, uh, the mid February high. So, mid February high, it, it managed to act as resistance there. So, that entire region may act as support should the market drift a bit lower. And even if it does nice to drift a bit below that, uh, support might be found in around the 7,200 mark. And it's only if really if we take out the uh, the late February low of in around this area here, 7,040, could then potentially we see um, further, further moves to the downside. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the DAX, the German market. 
Similar situation, the DAX, German market, reached a level not seen since uh, October, which obviously is quite significant. But I, what I think is, uh, is actually more significant is the fact that this area here, which is just shy of 11,700, 11,690, these areas here, that actually has fairly decent support uh, last, well, last, uh, last February, uh, March, and last, yeah, February and March last year. And uh, it did manage to act as resistance again. Uh, actually, that support back then uh, managed to act as resistance in early November. Uh, so now that we're actually moved firmly above that, we're, we're, um, we're about 70 or 80 points beyond that uh, currently, that uh, metric may act as support going forward. So keep an eye out for the kind of 11,700 region. And we're currently trading at 11,760 there, thereabouts. If you continue to press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at. Um, Targeting just uh, heading up towards the 200 moving average, which comes into play in 11,784. And then if you go beyond that, keep an eye for the kind of big psychological number of 12,000. If you do manage to see to drift a bit lower uh, and head uh, back below the 11,700 level, 11,690 mark, if you do manage to drift below that, uh, support might be found from this region here in around 11,400. Um, continue with the kind of bullish theme. Um, the S&P 500 is also tipped to uh, open uh, at a level not seen at levels not seen since October. So once again, we're expecting the S&P 500 to reach a to open at, a, at about a five-month high. It's been a steady upward trend uh, since late December, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, what, what, as I mentioned in the, in the second ago, look at the DAX, talking about how the DAX managed to get above a, fairly, a level that was uh, fairly significant to get up in around 11,700. Taking a look at the S&P 500, the, uh, the 2,817, 2,820 mark, this region here did manage to act as a fairly significant uh, level back in uh, October, uh, in November and December, and also yet again uh, in, early, in, in February and early March. Now we're, we're well above that metric. Uh, we're about 2,843 at the moment, so we're, we're good 20 or 24 points north of that metric. And if you can hold above 2,820, we could see the market press on higher from here. We could see a head up towards uh, this region here in around 2,865. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 2,900. Um, if we do manage to see any pullbacks, uh, like I said, support might be found in around the 2,817, 820 mark, or even down as low as the 2,800 figure itself. It's, of course, it's a big psychological number. And even if you drop below that, um, this, this red line here, the 20 moving average, might come into play at 2,753. Take a look now at what's going on over in the gold market. So gold has had a... In terms of um, price movement, actually been relatively quiet uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've had a fairly sizable sell-off in kind of mid, mid to late February, and we've kind of been recuperating the ground ever since there. Uh, the market's back above 1300, big psychological number. Uh, but if you can press on higher from 1300, this area here, we could be looking at uh, 1320. Uh, and if we go beyond that, we could be heading up, looking like heading up towards uh, 1346 or 1350. If the market does manage to drift a bit lower, uh, as long as we hold above the most recent lows, which come into play around kind of 1280, 1276, uh, support might be found in those areas. But if you do see a break below 1276, that could be a sign that this is the beginning of a new kind of downward trend. And if you, head, if you make a sizable break below 1276, we could be looking heading back down toward head back down towards the kind of 1260 region. Uh, take a look now what's going on in the old market. In the last number of months, there's been a reasonably strong correlation between global equities and, equi and oil. And it largely ties into the fact that if the global, global economy is doing well, demand for oil will be high. So it's a, not really a major, really major surprise. You've seen global equity markets at multi-month highs. And we've also seen, uh, in this case, Brent oil uh, hit a level not seen since October. So Sorry, not, not seen since November. So we're looking at, at reaching four-month highs on the oil contract. Now, granted, the volatility and, and, the, and the size of the moves you've been seeing in an oil, an oil has been fairly low recently, but nonetheless, it's reached multi-month highs, so the market's clearly pushing to the upside. And if you could take out the uh, the mid-November high, 60, 63, spot 36, it could take us up towards the psychologically important $70 per barrel level, uh, which actually coincides nicely 
with the 200 day moving average, this red line here. Uh, if you do see a move to the downside in Brent oil, support might be, might be found in around the $65 a barrel region. Or from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes to play at 63 spot 78. It's a similar situation for WTI. What about WTI? Has racked up a level once again, not, not seen since November. So we're talking four month highs in WTI. The market's creating multi month highs. So you know, the trend is to the upside. So if you continue pressing on high from here, we could be looking at targeting the $60 a mark. It's a big psychological number. Actually, should we go beyond that? So our, the next level to keep an eye out for might be this red line here, the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 61 spot 92. Uh, any moves to the downside might find some support from this area here. Uh, it's six, at 58 at spot 10. And should we go below that, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards the $56 a barrel region. It, we saw quite a bit of consolidation in around the 56 region uh, on WTI in the past. So that makes it light, more likely that it could do active support again in the near term. Keeping an eye on what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. So since mid January, Euro dollar has been in a nice class example of a downward trend, a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Um, in fact, the, the level that we saw only actually early March uh, last week was actually back to a level that, was, that hasn't been seen uh, since June 2017. So, give an indication of uh, how negative sentiment on the euro has been recently. Uh, like I said, we've seen a series of lower lows and lower highs. So, if that if this kind of textbook example of a downward trend were to continue, uh, we may not see this push higher take out the recent high, and the recent high comes to play at one spot 14.19, one spot 14.20. So we may find some resistance come into play in order to kind of one spot 14, one spot 14.20 area. If the uh, the wider downward trend does con continue, we could be looking at heading uh, heading heading lower again and looking at uh, retesting or possibly taking out the recent lows at one spot 11.76. And should we go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards 1 spot 11.10. It's only really if you get a sizable break above the kind of say they're going to 115 area here and north of the 200 moving average, which comes to the play at 1 spot 14.85. It's only really if you have a sizable break beyond that, because then we kind of look, then we kind of start to feel that the recent downward trend uh, has come to an end. Take a look now at pound US dollar. So the pound dollar, uh, despite all of us going on in Brexit and, and a lot of the, the, the big political talk, um, the pound has been doing quite well. Uh, the pound has been in a solid upward trend against the, against the US dollar uh, for over three months now, since mid-December. So, nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Granted, we, yeah, volatility has been high, so if you are trading uh, cable, please keep an eye out for the high levels of volatility. Some of the daily ranges have been quite large on the pound US dollar recently. Uh, if you look to take out the, uh, the recent highs are in around the uh, one spot 30, um, one spot 33.62 region, or, or the most recent high, one spot 33.82. If you take the take out that high, we could be looking at heading back up towards uh, the 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 um, the, uh, the, um, the uh, highs of early June 2018, which should come into play in around one spot 34.72 or up towards 135. Most of the downside uh, in, in, in pound dollar might find some support from the uh, one spot 32 area or down, down as low as one spot 30 area. And that, should, that a, the one spot 30 area is a big psychological number, but it also sort of coincides with the turn moving average, this red line here. Uh, taking a look at the week ahead, uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com. And under news and analysis, uh, most of the updates that myself and, and the other analysts post. Uh, our our, our, uh, our um, updating updates to the new site. Some are posted on Insights, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, but taking a look at the week ahead. Uh, so later today, uh, today after the close, FedEx, the US delivery company, will report their third quarter figures. Uh, we have already covered the well, we have already covered, covered one portion of it. Um, we have US earnings and also uh, sorry UK earnings and US consumer uh, price index CPI. So the inflation figures are out tomorrow from the UK. As I mentioned, the, the Federal Reserve's um, two-day meeting begins today, but we have the announcement tomorrow on Thursday. Keep sick with the central bank theme. We have an update from the Bank of England. Uh, we, on Thursday, we have full-year figures from Next, as we do Ted Baker. 
uh, with third quarter figures from Nike, uh, the, the US fashion house, and uh, the EU Council meeting on Thursday and Friday. <coughs> In really, and um, finishing off the week, uh, Friday uh, on, on Friday we have the uh, the various different um, PMI reports, the Pershing Managers Index reports coming out, um, and also on Friday we have Canadian retail sales and Canadian CPI. Um, on our platform, uh, on few hundred market pulse, click on the second option down, you get market insights. Some of the updates that we do get posted to the website. Some of the updates that we do throughout the day get posted to insights. So if you're on a trading platform, please keep an eye out for market insights. Um, also, please keep an eye out for uh, chart forum, which is the third option down on on um, on um, uh, market pulse. So chart forum is essentially just a quick snapshot of a particular chart. And uh, Zeph and the analysts update it um, you know, every, uh, on a daily basis. And anybody with a CMC account um, can actually up, can up, can update it. And it's just take a snapshot of a chart and write some commentary on what they think the price action is going to do. Uh, that's all for me this week. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.